Good day, Ziggy D here, and welcome back for my Pillars of Eternity role playthrough. In the last episode, in this cave up here, <laughs> we found our death for the first time to a grizzly bear. So we learned a valuable lesson. Things that you would imagine to be ferocious and scary and deadly are probably ferocious and scary and deadly. I like this. I like this a lot. Because now I have to actually think about things a little bit more rather than... Sure, if the game has something that we can encounter, surely we should be able to easily kill it right now, right? Right? Well, that's not the case in this game. This game is not afraid to throw some things at you that may be a little bit too hard that you might have to come back to with help, with another strategy, or when you're more powerful. And I really like that, guys. So, with the grizzly bear being way too powerful to take on for now, and us not being able to climb the wall here, there's not much else to do in this zone just yet. I don't believe so. I think on that note, it is time to travel. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So it looks like the next location on our radar is to head towards, straight towards Gilded Vale. We still have to get treatment for our creeping insanity. And hopefully we can find that in Gilded Vale. So let's go ahead and travel there. It will take you eight hours to complete your journey from Valewood to Gilded Vale. I accept. So here we are at the entrance of Gilded Vale. Looks a little bit, uh, looks a little bit grim, I'm not going to lie. So, let's, let's head on in and see, see what's the deal with Gilded Vale. How are things going here? Because most of the places we've been to so far have been fairly grim, and we'll see if the trend continues here. So, what can we, we have, uh, we have a bit of an impression, Oh, here we go. Wow. Grim may have been an understatement. You must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. No kidding! No kidding! He glances at the gnarled, leafless monstrosity of a tree next to him. Do you welcome everyone this way? The only answer you hear is the buzzing of flies from the tree. I guess that's... I guess. Of course, we'll need to make some inquiries first. The inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever sired a hollowborn child? Okay... I... I don't know what this hollowborn... you're talking about. What An are you talking about? An born without a soul, of course. Lord Raderick has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. Mm, I should continue. warn you, stranger. Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, and those who would hide a curse in our midst. He steps to the side and inclines his head ever so slightly towards the deformed tree. I would think that the message is fairly clear. His lordship's wife is with child and do any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. We can continue our interview then, after the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn, just southwest of here. Well, I may be reconsidering... This as <laughs> the potential place for me to settle into a new home. Hmm. I was looking for a peaceful, a peaceful place, and I don't know. Well, there's been a certain peace here, but probably not the sort of peace I was hoping for. Okay. I don't know if I want to tell him that I've been feeling strange since we encountered a beerwick. Considering they they seem like a very su superstitious bunch to basically uh, accuse people of be uh, being born without souls and to string up their parents by their necks from a tree. This concerns me greatly. Okay, um, let's ask a little bit more about the Hollowborn and find get gauge exactly uh, what is the deal here. He blinks. 
I forgot that you foreigners do not have this curse in your homelands. The Hollowborn have been a scourge upon the Durwood for almost 15 years now. He lowers his voice to a whisper. Children born without souls. He shakes his head. Pitiful, dumb things that breathe, barely, but do not truly live. Some say the Hollowborn are a disease. Some say they are a punishment from the gods. He raises his empty hands. In truth, no one knows, but they began spreading after the Saints' War, and so the name Widewind's Legacy stuck in honour of that foul, blasphemous pretender. His voice shakes with vitriol. I see. Lord Raedric's decrees may seem strict at times, but he has our best interests at heart. He nods. Hmm, maybe, maybe they're telling the truth. Maybe there are some really dark things going on here. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. It's important that everyone in the Gilded Vale understands our rules. Alright, very well then. I'm going to try and seek help. Hopefully I don't regret this. Whatever your problem, it sounds like a matter for an Animancer. However, the only Animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. <laughs> Just my Consider luck. yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radrick, we saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. There is some wisdom behind those words. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. <laughs> wow. My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. Okay, so let's let's tell him about this strange ceremony that we witnessed and see if we can get inf any information about it. And before I got here, I saw several people conducting a strange ceremony near the ruins. He regards you carefully. You'll want to mind where you mention that. Trespassing on Engwith and lands is illegal, not to mention dangerous. You probably saw someone attempting some new ritual to appease the gods. People would try anything these days. But Wrath have mercy. We certainly have. I don't think so. Just as they finished, there was a beer wick. He polishes his spectacles on his sleeve. If you'd been that close to a beer wick, you wouldn't be standing here. Yeah, they're not going to believe me about that. Keep out of... Interesting. Oh. Listen! Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. God's have mercy. What does three bells mean? It seems your arrival is ill-timed. Ogiet looks out towards the east, his expression unreadable. He blinks slowly and turns his attention back to you. Three bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's heir is lost, or else Hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. Damn. Timing. Timing, right? Timing. <laughs> what exactly do you mean? You come to us at a time of mourning. The legacy has struck at the heart of Gilded Vale. Our efforts to redeem ourselves in the eyes of Barath must be redoubled. He sets a steady gaze on you. So, does this affect the Lord's offer to the new settlers? I can be sure of nothing right now. I advise you get some rest. The inn or a stable for all I care. Find me afterwards, I will know more soon enough. Very well. Well... Okay. We've arrived at quite a time. A time of hollow-born children of massive stringing ups of the population in the center of town. The death of a noble. Wow, okay. I wouldn't mind going and talking to these people over here, they seem important. What if it's not the baby? Maybe Kolsk managed to. Hush, are you mad? Leave it for the indoors. Did you hear the bells? Bad news, I think. Okay. So we mentioned that we we would be uh, welcome to help ourselves to <laughs> anything found in the copy uh, in the pockets of 
Uh, it, was, it sounded like the, the medicine woman or the spiritual healer. I don't know if we're going to be able to. Let's talk to Ada and Are you ask. looking for someone in that tree? Uh, I could introduce you. <laughs> Guy's got a bit of a sense of humor, it seems. <laughs> Strange way to talk about your dead. He looks up at the tree and breathes out. Half the town's up there now, seems like. No right way to talk about it. <laughs> I'm looking for someone who can help me feel better. And no, I don't mean in that way. <laughs> he gives an understanding nod as he takes a long drag from his pipe. My condolences. He exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village around him. Hmm. Let's go ex examine the tree here. Scattered between the roots are bracelets of twine and bead, wilting flowers and notes half erased by the rains. Alright, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to search anyone in the in the actual tree here. Uh, unless we can... there's some stairs over here. Alright, we're going to have to have a little bit of an explore, see what we can find. <laughs> Harvesting some bod blood moss from around the corpses. <laughs> Seems like the most appropriate place for the blood moss to grow, really. Okay. So we have some stairs down here in the center of town, in, in what looks like some ruins. Papa says the temple is cursed! Ah, that must be... that must be this. Maybe we shouldn't head into the cursed temple just yet. Uh, I think we might take some time to explore around town a little bit further. And see if we can gauge exactly what's going on here. Things are bound to get worse now. Aloth. Hmm, an elf. You see four people gathered by the door to the inn. Their raised voices and chopping gest gestures suggest an argument reaching its climax. The first figure raises his hands for calm. His face is partially obscured by a hood, but his height and statue suggest an elf. I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. Hmm. What's going on here? One of the other men points at the hooded elf. His eyes are red from drink, but his gaze is focused. Mocking us even while she shelters in our village. Just goes to show you what these fancy Ada manners are worth. We don't take to that kind of treatment. Not from foreigners, and especially not from Adirans. Go on. Say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. <laughs> Fire, you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksfeather! Oh! <laughs> oh, wow, wow. I'll cut that barrel-looking tongue out of your head. Damn, things are about to break down. This is a misunderstanding. I didn't say whatever it is you think I said. We've nigh quarrel. What? Does this person, like, have a split personality or something? That's where you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> this is unnecessary. Wouldn't you be rather in? Wouldn't you rather be inside drinking than out here arguing? We don't want your charity either, foreigner. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. That didn't work for him. <laughs> they squint at you through red, bleary eyes. It sounds suspiciously like you're defending him. Oh damn! Okay. Welp. Oh, Alright. <laughs> I guess I have no choice left now. So, my welcome into town was not a great one, and now I'm not gonna make do myself any favours here, I think. <laughs> With this. Okay, um, here's... Oh, do I... I mean... Do I kill them? They, they're just drunks having an argument, but, uh... Maybe I can maybe I can knock them down and scare them off with a mind wave. And we'll see we'll see how that goes. Alright. <laughs> Combat starts. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I don't know my own strength. <laughs> oh, okay. Well there's only one thing left for it. We must blow them all up now. Let there be no witnesses! Oh my lord, alright, alright, last one. Wow. What have I done? As the last of the attackers falls, the elf turns to you, the tension almost gone from his smooth face. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. <laughs> 
thank you for your timely <laughs> neither, assistance with that awkward situation. Oh, uh, well. <sighs> you know what? You're welcome. Courtesy is a rare pleasure in these parts. Though your accent suggests that you are no more local than I. He straightens his hood and you note the remains of fraying embroidery in his gloves. His boots are caked with the dirt of many months' travel, but the leatherwork beneath is sturdy and fine. Seems like a... seems like a, a wealthy fellow who's done quite a bit of travelling. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvuser, at your service. Okay. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you come to find yourself here? I'm a wizard by training. And an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. Ah, uh, pretty much pretty much as I expected from looking at him. And how exactly did you come to be here? I was travelling with a caravan, but we were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Hmm. Well, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. In half the locals would arrest you for trespassing, and the rest would kill you outright. Yeah, I shouldn't have been so open with I'm that. I'm curious. <laughs> what exactly did you find there? Hmm. He seems like a knowledgeable type. He might actually be willing to believe me. A beerwick. And you survived? I've heard such a thing was impossible. But it seems you either have a knack for timing or the favor of the gods. Seems like you trust me. This is good. This is good. We might be able to find out some interesting things from Aloth. So, just how did you manage to cross these three drunks here that now lie scattered on the ground? <laughs> I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. <laughs> I seem to recall that you did tell that one man to go fuck his sister. Ah, that. He clears his throat and adjusts his sleeves. As I tried to tell them, they misheard me. Happens all too easily after a few pints, and the accent doesn't help. Ah, uh, I... I see. For which I am grateful. Let's uh, discuss something else, shall we? There's something a little bit off about this guy. <laughs> So just what are you doing in Gilded Vale? An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the Magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. Hmm. And you? Well, I was originally planning on being a settler, but I've been experiencing some strange things of late. I'm looking for an expert on souls. Indeed. The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. He has rid himself of them almost as desperately. He nods at the gnarled old tree in the center of town. Quite the uh, feature piece, isn't it? <laughs> His darting glance takes in a tumble-down dwell tumble -down dwellings and the fallow rock-strewn fields. I expect that such expertise would be best sought elsewhere. So, Aloth, you don't exactly look like a settler. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. That's that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Well, I should get going. Thank you for the information. As should I, given recent events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. <laughs> no one owns it. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. I'm no stranger to traveling with company. It's basically what I've done all my life. So do I. Let's go then. Excellent. I shall follow you. Maybe we can get to know a little bit more from Aloth. He seems, he seems like he could be a useful fellow to have around as well. A wizard, he mentioned. Okay, let's. We might as well scrape up whatever coins we can find from these drunks on the ground. Ah, that uh, didn't exactly go as I had hoped, really. Not even close. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, I suppose now is a good time for us to uh, get to know our new traveling companion, Aloth. Uh, I'm curious a little bit about him. So, he's currently wearing 
Uh, some customized leather armor, it looks like. Properties overseeing. Interesting. Uh, 1.1 times ability area of effect, so his spells have a larger radius. Stiffer and more durable than ordinary hide leather. Leather armor is shaped and boiled in order. So it's, be it's basic leather armor, though, with... Uh, it seems like his own enchantment on it. He also has a hood and a regular cape. Uh, he's wielding a scepter, a two-handed weapon. And uh, he also has a he's also holding a rapier as well. Okay. Let's see, uh, we can probably learn a little bit more about him here, though, in terms of what he can do in combat. We might learn that sort of on the road a little bit, I think. Uh, hmm. He is an elf, so he has the eyesight of an elf, which provides extra deflection, reflex, and accuracy. Um, otherwise, we can see he has, uh, he knows quite a few spells here, which I think we might be able to explore a little bit later in combat. And, uh, yeah, that should be interesting. Well, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> okay, so let's, he let's head with him then into this inn. I actually do need to sleep. I've taken quite a bit of damage on the road. I believe this was the inn. Sounds like it. Ah, oh, this has a much more positive vibe to it. I feel much more at home here. <laughs> it sounds a bit rowdy though, doesn't it? <laughs> the floorboards are sticky with spills that no one has bothered to clean. Oh, I'm hearing like shattering glasses and stuff in the background. Damn, the atmosphere in here though. It's great, I love it, I'm home. Much more, uh, much more enjoyable than outside. <laughs> okay, let's go talk to the barkeep. How do you do? Mm, Pasca. Hello and welcome to the the innkeeper looks up. Oh, it's you. Tenfrith told us what you did for him. It's such a relief to have him back. I can't thank you enough. Oh, the cook. Right. Right. We rescued the cook. How did she know me? I guess I have... <laughs> That's a silly question. I guess I'm pretty distinctive. <laughs> I should be used to that by now. I've lived, <laughs> I've lived as a moon godlike my whole life. Consider yourself a favorite of the house. Discounts on drinks, rooms. Tenfrith said he wanted to whip you something up something nice. He's already back to work in the kitchen, she laughs. So, what would you like? Well, uh, I'd like a room, but first I'd like to talk a little bit exactly. Uh, tell me a little bit about this inn first. Really? Well, let me see. The actual building's been here for years, but the Black Hound's fairly new. We get a lot of new faces in here too. Fewer than we used to, I admit. Tenfrith's the big draw. I'm sure we'll get the big crowds back again in no time. Apparently he's a good cook. I, I guess that might be why bandits took him. <laughs> they liked that he's cooking so much they decided they'd make a portable version. I used to work the tables actually, until the old owner up and left. Nobody's sure what happened to him. He even left his poor hound behind. That's the name, see, the Black Hound. It's still sitting upstairs pining after him, poor old girl. Place ended up in my hands somehow, she laughs. My very own inn. A lot of hard work involved, but it's been worth it so far. Sounds like Pasca's taking over the management and barkeep role now. And, uh, looks like they're a little bit understaffed though. Please, sit where you like. Would you like a drink or a room? We have two available at the moment. I'm afraid we can't offer much by way of good meal today, unless you're fond of cold porridge. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's investigate their wares first. I'm sure you'll find something to your liking. We have the finest cook in Darwood. Durwood, that's the one. Uh, maybe we can trade off some of the uh, things we've picked up that we don't really need. I mean, I don't need a lot of this, like, clothing and stuff, and they might be able to find some use for it in town, maybe. Uh, that's a regular dagger. We'll go ahead and chuck these guys in there. I'm going to keep my fancy disappointer. Uh, <laughs> I don't exactly know what to make of that one just yet. I don't think I'm going to need many of these. Hide armor. Might hold on to some of these things for a little while. We'll just we'll just get rid of a few things. Just unload a few things here. Okay. Uh, what does what does she have? So uh, a lot of a lot of food and potions and ales and stuff like that. Uh, some of this stuff looks like it'd probably be used for crafting. Probably nothing I'm going to pick up just yet. I think I'm okay for supplies really. What is exactly what exactly does food? Do? Ah, okay. It seems like food's actually going to be pretty useful. Plus two constitution, plus one perception, plus five max health for 150 seconds. So, quite, you know, that's pretty, pretty major. Uh, you know, a pretty noticeable buff to uh, sort of keep up. Maybe having some good foods for our journeys could be, could be wise. Hmm, interesting. Cheap. Let's have a look. Most of this stuff is pretty cheap. It looks like one ten plus max endurance, constitution, perception. Those are pretty good. Endurance, constitution, endurance, dexterity. 
Hmm, interesting. And you can get damage reduction from drinking ale. It makes you a little bit a little bit hardier in combat. <laughs> Uh, plus 6 max endurance for 10 seconds, 1 constitution for 150 seconds. Nothing like being a bit of a milk drinker before combat. <laughs> Alright, um, I think I'll, I think I'll hold off for now though. I don't think I need to do any trading just yet. Task completed, late for dinner. Looks like we have some information here. Good day to you. Alright, we'll get a, we'll rent a room now, we do need to rest. Certainly, you're always welcome here. Ah, we get... We get a choice of rooms. We can take. We can choose to sleep on the floor in the common room, which costs nothing but uh, doesn't do anything other than healing us. Uh, but if we rest in uh, better quarters, we can gain extra bonuses: plus one reception, plus one mechanics. Sure, let's let's have a laborer's rest. I think we've earned it. <laughs> ah, looks cozy. Oh. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with a suffoca suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gilded Vale's gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face is shriveled inward like a mouldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind, until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly, her head snaps up, and her eyes open, and they are empty, and behind them is vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts, with, and with a gust of rancid air, she speaks a word. Watcha! You jolt awake, the foul smell of the wolf's woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets, and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. <laughs> dark, dark. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's going to do us for this episode. What a dark episode all round. We enter town greeted with a tree full of hanging corpses. Tales of soulless children born, the death of a noble, and terrifying dreams of an animancer. It'll be exciting to see what happens in the next episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D. And thanks for watching.